I feel more like a goddess with curly hair. Actually, my curly hair is in there. I love my hair. I love my curly hair. And my curly hair is me. I feel uh, a lot of animosity towards my curls. It took me 35 years to really like my hair, but now I'm in sync with who I am. I love my curls. Totally, totally love them. Sort of like my stamp. I would never give up my hair, ever. I love my hair. Straightening your hair ultimately just changes your appearance and stuff, but the real you is your natural hair. I'm actually a psychoanalyst, and I've often joked that I would need a whole separate analysis to deal with my hair. So there's something sort of embarrassing about still feeling this way and knowing that I'm depressing this part of myself. To walk around with a hairstyle that automatically draws eyes means you have to be ready for all that attention. I've always embraced my inner curly. I have. It's um, part of my personality. And I think when the hair doesn't fit your personality, it's really more problematic, and that's probably how I feel, because I'm a more, somewhat more traditional, conservative person. A curly hair personality is bright and happy and funny and fun, cheerful. That's in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> and like funny, most of the time. The um, perception of curly haired people is confident, uncontrollable, free spirited, wild, maybe a little out there, a little bizarre, unkempt, outgoing, fun, really sensual, free, crazy, crazy. My ex husband used to say that every hair was an extension of my brain cells because he thought I was crazy. I had an ex husband who used to equate his interpretation of my craziness with um, how curly my hair was. The first time I really realized that maybe people saw me as a little more whimsical was when I first straightened my hair and people responded differently to me, much more serious. Sometimes I'll have my hair in a ponytail when it's curly and people just kind of tilt their head and smile. They just assume you're nice, like a puppy. The hair was always an issue. Hair was brought up every day. Cut your hair, put your hair in, my mother. You know, do this with your hair, that with your hair. My dad loves my curls. He always says I look great. I think my mom loved that my hair fit my personality. My mother loves my straight hair, and not my curly hair. <laughs> She's always referring to my hair as a hot mess. She used to trap me in the bathroom in grade school and put all sorts of home things she had read about in my hair. Curly bangs. Have you ever seen that? My dad, I felt like, you know, he had three girls, we all had curly hair, and I think he wanted girls with straight hair. He would always say, well, can't you do something? I felt like I had to calm my hair down, you know, kind of for him. My German-Jewish grandmother, she, like, jokes about my hair all the time. Like, she'll chase me around her house with scissors. And she's 89. So the hair in my family, it, it's sort of become greater than me. My grandmother, my mother's mother, who was a designer and lived on Central Park South and went to the opera, um, I will never forget one day she refused to go out on the street with me. She said my hair looked like pubic hair. When you look different, it's easy for children to kind of target that. I think I got teased a lot at school as a result of it. When I was younger, I definitely felt like a little ostracized. So when I was in fifth grade, I shaved it off. In my school, there was a girl, and they made fun of her. I felt bad. Really hideous, wiry, kink. Anybody around? One of my nicknames in primary school was Fuzz Bomb, Four Eyes, Tinsel Teeth. So I had curly hair, braces, I mean, I was a real looker, uh, and glasses. I was with a bunch of Jewish kids from school. Everybody had my kind of hair. So I was fine. But when I went to college, 
That's when all of a sudden I was transported into a different world in Vermont. And I didn't know where my people were. I didn't know who I was. I just felt I had the wrong hair. I think of the giant hair dryer I used to travel with as a child, which looked like a suitcase. And it would come out on the conveyor belt, this, this big pale blue bubble. I would iron the hair on an ironing board but you can't get that close to the roots. You can't really access up here. And I went to bed every night with humongous rollers in my hair. Big spaghetti sauce cans. Huge, like toilet paper, or curlers, or beer can, whatever I could find. And I also put chemicals, like major chemicals. When I was older, and my hair fell out almost. And then, of course, I was way in style in the 60s, 70s. All of a sudden, I let my freak flag fly, and I let them out of the box, and everybody was like, whoa, jealous of like my fabulous hippie hair. I have a lot more confidence. I've accepted who I am. My hair is a part of who I am. And I feel when I go out, the world sees that. They see that I'm accepting who I am, and they embrace me more. Having curly hair is sort of like this unspoken sisterhood in a way. When you walk into a room and I see someone else with curly hair, it's instantly a conversation. When I'm out and I see somebody with like a big curly fro, I'm always like, you know. <laughs> Nowadays people come up to me and it's nice. They tell me I have lovely hair. I feel different when my hair is curly and in a ponytail, so I usually let my hair go so I can feel very nice looking. <laughs> they ask could they ping it, like, people are kind of fascinated and they're like, oh, if I do this, does it go up? A lot of people just like boing my hair a lot. <laughs> Somebody goes like this, it's like your hair. I had a boss who used to like, like come up to me randomly and just go like, Psh. And I didn't know if that was like sexual harassment or if he just liked curly hair. It was sort of weird. Oh my gosh, my friends touch my hair all the time. Ugh. I don't like it very much. My hair is so poofy. It's like a pillow. I brushed it too much, where now I like never brush my hair and the curls stay the same, but I think it made it really frizzy and just this giant mass that never really was appealing to me, so I always wanted to just flatten it. The advent of the flat iron has changed my life. <laughs> I'm not who I am when my hair is straight. Like, I call it like my alter ego. Curly hair is one girl and straight hair is another girl. You know, I was told that it looks more professional, you know, that people will accept you more, so I just went with that. Sometimes I'll have it done and I straighten it and I love it for like, <laughs> I love it for like the first five minutes, maybe even the first hour, and then after that hour, I'm like, God, why did I do this? So I just, whenever, I just go to California to get my hair blown out. Humid weather does not really treat my hair well. I think I've like taken cold weather vacations on purpose because I look so bad in the Caribbean. <laughs> you go out and it's one size, it gets humid and it becomes another size. I would go outside with scarves and hoods and anything I could to protect my hair from the elements. Days where it's, you know, just sort of like a, a drizzly humidity. I, uh, my hair is the best. It's thick and nice and curly. <laughs> when it's humid, you know, it's like Don King. As a naturalist, my best product in the whole world is H2O. It comes down to the right products. Products are everything. I found a place that um, cuts my hair and they know all about curly hair. I don't do anything to it at all. I wash it. I put conditioner in it, I scrunch it. I never blow dry it, I never iron it, I never do any of the things that straight haired women have to do. I spray my hair just like a plant. I don't ever brush it, I don't ever comb it. My greatest hair care tip is to leave it alone. Spending a night with a man and waking up in the morning, um, I can only tell you, <laughs> 
terror doesn't begin to describe <laughs> what I felt when I would make sure I woke up before he did and go into the bathroom and do what I needed to do so I could look like in the ballpark of the person that he'd encountered the night before. I was um, <clears throat> in a relationship with someone for two years. He never saw me with girl hair. Men find my curls incredibly sexy. My husband absolutely hates my hair straight. He won't even have sex with me when I have my hair straight. If I had sex, if I went to the gym, if I don't sleep with my hair and a little lucky, then it would start going frizzy again. Now when I put it up, I put it up in a way that's like, you know, glamorous, that's fun, that like, you know, lets these tendrils come down and, you know, it just gets like funky and beautiful and gorgeous and sensual. I think curly hair is so like bright, like a spring, like jumping or something. <laughs> I think curly girls have more fun. I think they're lighter and breezier because they don't have to take hours doing their hair. You know, you have to straighten your hair and work on your hair. It's like it takes all this time out of your life when you can be living your life versus sitting in front of a mirror with a big blow dryer, like, you know, doing your thing. I think curly hair on different people looks really good, even on me and different people, because different people have different styles. And I like different styles every single day, because every single day I have a different style, like cool, saggy, and nice, and, and messy. And I feel like my hair needs to be free almost twice a day or one week. Actually, I, I said ladies and gentlemen. Do we have any gentlemen here or is it all ladies? We do? Oh, good. All right. Brave you. Thank you. At least one smart man. So, Jonathan, um, you're the filmmaker, and here we are. You can all see Jonathan, and you are. might ask. What Jonathan, the hell yeah. are you doing? <laughs> so, Jonathan, tell us what drew you to this project and how you got into the whole curly girl biz. Um, I don't really. <laughs> um, so part of it was creative and part, part of it was business. I was consulting for a company based in L.A. Um, that was using some technology or whatever, and I didn't think they were doing a very good job. And they said, uh, I said, I think you should um, do something, create like something around community that people would contribute their stories to and uh, that would inspire people to, in, to, uh, to do that. And then we would go to you know, brands and say, we have this little tribe thing going on. And they said, well, if we did that, what would you, what would you do? And I just said, um, curly, curly girls. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so... Wait, wait, were you a curly guy when you had I hair? was a wavy guy. I mean, okay. I, I was long, deep red hair. So the woman who you, uh, many people fall in love with in the video, um, Everybody has their favorites, uh, but the, the woman who, and that was not intended, by the way, to be like a film. It was just a teaser for a bigger idea about community, kind of like the Dove campaign for real women. That's kind of where I modeled it as using just personal storytelling to tell the truth. And then people go, oh my God, you get me, kind of thing. And so, um, so I decided that it was a good idea, even if these people didn't, you know, want to participate and I just you know I'd go to synagogue or I'd go to a party and in, in New York and I would talk to my little you know Jewesses and then the you know the African women and the biracial women and the Cuban women and it was like so if I was going to do this thing about telling curly girls you know cr telling a story do you have a story and every one of them in their kind of New York way would like <laughs> to have a story, you know? And so I knew that if every one of them said that they had 20 stories or 100 stories that I was onto something. So, so, so you said something about a tribe, and we are a tribe, and I want to get back to that. 
But before we do... These are the chosen people. Uh, yes. <laughs> Marie, and I might add that Marie cuts my hair, but she gets mad at Mine me. Mine too. I don't, I d I don't I'm not taking follow... any responsibility for <laughs> she, that one. I, you I did don't good follow, today. Wait, wait, wait good. stop. I, I don't follow the whole diva thing religiously, and she gets mad at me, so sometimes she doesn't admit she cuts my hair. But Marie, <laughs> what drew you to create this salon? And you walk into Medusa Salon, and it's like, tonight in the atrium, you find your people, it's an amazing place. What led you to create Medusa Salon, why? I've been a hairstylist about uh, 30 some years. I still look young, so. <laughs> <laughs> They're thinking that too. Yes, so um, all my career, it's always been, uh, you look in the magazines, anytime somebody come in for a haircut, they always bring you a straight haircut and you're always the 70 percent of the world, world have some kind of bend in your hair but all these styles have always been for straight hair so i really wanted to find something not only for straight hair women for curly hair women also for men i think that was there was a lack of that for men and women mm -hmm. so um i got pregnant and i decided to cut my straight hair out and then grow it. Um, oh, so you had, your hair was straight? Yes, I used to So use, you have a picture like mine? I used to, oh yes. We all have that, we <laughs> all have a story. So when I cut my hair, uh, my straight hair off and I started growing my hair in its natural stage, I really like it. And my clients started seeing me with the natural hair and they started coming for, to get their hair cut with their natural stage also. What was beautiful about it is that you, I got some clients who would come and they would bring their friends over and they would have a club. They would have the haircut, they go out to, the, to lunch and then they go out and change the wardrobe and change the makeup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was, that's how I started it. But I was still not sure what to use and how to take care of the hair because there it is, you have your natural hair and you still struggling to find product that's gonna that's gonna help you well product, take care of it. product is a huge deal because yes. even i talked to several women tonight who clearly had curly hair underneath but their hair was straight and they said oh no because when i make my hair curly it doesn't look like yours yes and they all say that and a lot of this well there are a lot of things involved but a lot of it is about yes. product yes you have to be able to maintain it you have to be able to know what to use in it and get your own routine going. If you don't get your own routine, for me it was a trial and error because I keep trying things over and over on my clients to see and teach them what I'm doing to see what works for you and you also have to learn how to take care of it because you don't want to go home and you come out of the salon and you look really well, really good and then you go home, you wake up the next day. It's I spend all that money and look at my hair. So one so. of the things you tell people, and I know this, and this astonished me when I first started going to Marie to get my hair cut, was don't wash your hair. So that just blew my mind. I thought, oh, God, that's disgusting. What do you mean? So, so talk about that. Talk about washing your hair. I didn't tell you not wash your hair. I told you not to <laughs> use <laughs> I got it wrong. <laughs> no wonder it's curly. Yeah. <laughs> These are bugs. No, go ahead. I told you not to use soap in your hair. That's right. I told you soap is used in the oven to clean the oven. <laughs> the soap is used at the car wash to use the grease of the car. You don't have that kind of dirt in your hair. You have your unnatural oil. And if you take out your unnatural oil, you're going to dry your hair. It's going to be frizzy. It's going to break. And you don't really see your texture. Right. Right. Because it's not getting the nutrition that it needs. So there are products, like a Diva has a product, and this is not a commercial for Diva. In fact, Marie and I got in a fight earlier tonight because I cheated on her and used Moroccan oil in my hair, and she told me... <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but I... But there are products that it you It was can... not about the Moroccan oil. It was about the oil. Okay. Because what we are doing, we are not regulating the amount of oil that is going into our hair. We think that using oil is, is moisturizing for your hair. Using more, more, too much oil 
can also shield moisturizer from penetrating in your hair. Okay, before we get too into technique and products, I want to back up, and I know, Jonathan, you interviewed a lot of people, and Marie, you see people every day. I, I referred before to the decision for me to go curly. It was a big deal. Like, growing up as I did in the 60s, um, with Seventeen magazine and the ideal woman and what she looked like, as you said, people yes. came with the pictures. It wasn't me. It wasn't my sisters. It was such a huge decision and kind of a scary decision. So, Jonathan, what what kind of stories did you hear from women? Well, I mean, what, what's interesting about what I because I've literally talked to hundreds and hundreds of women and. Not only that, I do these live events called the Curly Monologues, which I'm going to bring to San Francisco, which is where, women get, up on, where women get up on stage and share their stories that they've already, we've kind of crafted together. And it's really kind of like here when you see, you walk into a place where you're used to seeing people with all types of hair and suddenly everybody's curly. It's kind of amazing. Um, but what, what I have found when talking to women who have, who have had challenges is what you spoke about, and I think Diva does a really good job of it, is education, right? Yes. So, you know, when somebody will say, I just had no idea what to do with it, that still exists, even though, like, women just do their thing because they don't know any better, yes. right? Yes, yes. So I think that's a huge thing. I think, I mean, there's so much more than what's here in the hundreds of videos that I've done in terms of everybody's story. I mean, the tribe thing, to me, is the most important. What the, not the most important, but it's just the most, it kind of hits at a deep place. Well, it's, it's a really deep thing, and it's an ethnic thing. And but it's, it's, it hits all the ethnicities. Yes. I love things yes. that transcend age and race and ethnicity Absolutely. and geography. And I, at one of my curly mo monologues, a woman, a black woman had gotten on stage and did her thing, and, and then about a, an hour later, she's like, can I have the mic again? <laughs> can I have the mic again? Yes. And, the, oh, okay. Uh -huh. And you give her the mic, and, you know, she didn't even get up on stage. She was already in the audience. She's like, I didn't know white girls went through this. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was at that moment that I knew I was onto something even bigger than what I had imagined, because, I mean, the healing part of it, you know, uh, there's... I've had, I mean, just the, the most ridiculous things happen. I mean, when you talk to a curly girl, the most ridiculous things happen anyway. But um, I've just had incredible, incredible things. And I met these women in a day. One was Lebanese, one was Moroccan, one was from Israel. One was, and I thought, wow, you could do something called, like as a metaphor for we're all the same, yes. is doing something called, we should do that here, because the Jews <laughs> need to take a position on peace around the world. So it's called Curly <laughs> Pieces, yeah. but it's P-E-A-C-E-S. And you do a whole round table and you find out they're all from different places yeah. and they all are Semitic. Well, absolutely. But, you know, the, the ethnic piece of it, it's about accepting who you are and it's about being proud of who you are and it's about not no matter what. sanitizing it to become some other ideal. And you know what's coming. Uh, Marie, because Marie and I have had a lot of conversations. <laughs> she knows what's coming. I'm going to say two words to you, and I want to get a reaction. Ready? <laughs> I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm going to say? Yes. Michelle Obama. Well. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Can I have... Wait, uh, Oh, no, my God. Stop. This is mind blowing. <laughs> Marie. Oh, my God. I have my own stop. Michelle Obama story. Marie, go. Well, as I said to you, I feel like she's not representing black women. She's not representing black women because we have a first lady in... in United States of America, where they say that a black person will never live in the White House. There is a black woman living there, and she is really white. Well, in a wait. way, excuse me, I'm finished. Let me finish. <laughs> Let me finish. Her hair, she's not representing her, us, us, her, us, excuse me, because her children both have straight hair. She has straight hair, and she's not her. She's representing what society wants her to represent. Because it's safe, if, and it's not threatening, and she could do more for empowering young black girls. We talk about if that, she, yes. I mean, I just, and I told Marie, I said, Marie, you've got to do well, this. Well, I wanted to send her so a letter ask, and said, please represent <laughs> us. So let me ask you. I will do your hair for free. <laughs> represent <laughs> us. You know? So let me ask you a question. Yes. So, so this is what happened. A couple of years ago, I realized... Wait, so Obama is now in his second term. 
So she could really do whatever, yes. right? Because you're not, okay. So Because he's starting to so do whatever. So what I started to good. do, so I had an idea, and I called up a graphic designer one day, and I said, find me a picture of a M Michelle Obama, and, and put, take off, and I said, put all these hairstyles mm -hmm. on her, Angela Davis, Beyonce, all of this, and it said across like a T-shirt, free Michelle, Ooh. okay? <laughs> So at the time, at the time, I was collaborating on the on on a project with two biracial women who were amazing performance artists in New York, and a black guy, and and I said this would be awesome. Yeah. And he, they were like, you can't do that. Why you not? You can't do that. Why and not? And I thought, wow. Yeah. So part of it is because she, in some ways, is either hell like a queen or. She's comfortable with herself. And well, it's I don't like, think I don't Michelle is comfortable with herself. Okay. I think <laughs> Michelle is comfortable. I have her cell phone number. Let's be call well, her. because I feel like Michelle is not going. Not, not, she, she's not comfortable being herself with curly, kinky, or tightly exactly. coiled hair. And as a parent, you want to be empowering your yes. kids. Well, this is the Chris Rock film. I mean, Chris Rock made the film, I don't know how many, many of you saw Good Hair, because Good his hair. adorable little girl, Lola, came to him and said, why don't I have good hair? That, that's a, a fabulous film if you haven't seen it, because one of the things he does is go to India where they sacrifice the hair at the temple and then sell the hair. It's, it's extraordinary. I want to move on to something kind of serious, and I wasn't aware of this, but I read an article that was actually in the Journal of American Medicine about um, one of the causes of obesity among black women, but it could be all curly women is, this is so bizarre. They don't exercise during the day because if you exercise like on your lunch hour, it's going to destroy your hair. And as opposed to somebody with a straight hair can go in and exercise and sweat and shower and then it's fabulous. Those of us, particularly if you're just starting out with a curly hair, you can't. You can't do it. And, and that to me is serious stuff. Actually uh, what happened is when the, the woman who use chemical straightener in their hair they cannot go to the gym and, and exercise because, of course, they are sweating. It's going to revert. Or they cannot go swimming because the hair is going to be um, not staying into the style that right. it's in. So right. they have to go and do their hair again. But us who are doing uh, naturally curly hair people, my clients go exercise all the time. Yeah. They go swimming. Because they know how to right. take care of their hair. They wake up the next day, they, they don't scrunch. panic. They don't panic. That's what black women used to be. Right. We wake up the next day or we go somewhere, we panic. Right. Because my hair don't look good. Right. I remember a time that I had my hair done and I was a hairstylist. I went out and it just started misting. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm not going out. Yeah. No, I'm not going out. My hair is not going to look I'm good. I'm going to stay home and eat ice cream. Yes. <laughs> But in the not in the Caribbean. <laughs> yes, but now what, they, what, what our clients are doing, they go out and exercise. Actually, when you have that natural oil in your hair and it's nurturing your strand of hair, it's beautiful. Yeah. Every time I go out to exercise, I like my hair even more. Right. That's so a good commercial. That is a really Curly good commercial. Curly exercise. <laughs> so you've seen a lot of women, Marie, who come to you who are just starting to embrace their curly girl, um, just getting on the road there. So you've probably seen, and I know I had for years, damaged hair. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, my hair, I'm surprised it didn't fall out of my head. The, the, the processing and the stuff we used to use. Tell me, tell me what kind of, what's the worst? Do you still see a lot of that same kind oh, of yeah, damage? Yeah, they come all the time to us, actually. We do, we call it the big chop. The big what? The big chop. 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 Yes. So you just get rid of it? Just get rid of it. Yeah. Some of them are not willing to just cut it right there. They just let you cut it little by little, and then they come back, and then you cut more and more until they, cut, they take off the chemical part of hair. We do it all the so time. So you got to get rid of it. But I have a question, because I've noticed in, in, in relatively recent years, um, this whole new way of straightening hair came in, the Brazilian. So what's that, and what are they using, and is that healthier, or is that still same old damage? Can I say a word? I hate it. Okay. <laughs> Why you am I not the surprised? H word. <laughs> I, I say the hate word because you get a beautiful head of hair, 
and then you go, you do Brazilian, you straight it. And the hair don't revert back. You have to cut your hair, you have to grow the hair out. I don't know, I haven't used Brazilian uh, blowout, or there, there was one that was out there and it had formaldehyde in it. That was totally, I mean, you have formaldehyde and then you put a 425 degree heat on it. To me, it's like you're inviting cancer into your head. Mm. Mm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All right. There, the, the, your, your, your movie touched on so many things, Jonathan. And, and one of the things, and I know many um, women have said to me once I started wearing my hair naturally, um, well, you know, I might do that, but my husband just, or my boyfriend, or my whatever. And I was so happy to see some of these women in the movie saying their, their significant others embrace the sensuality of their hair. Do you think there's still that thing where? Well, he, like to me, the, the biggest thing, which sort of is, is about that every curly girl, it seems to me at one point or another, had issues with her hair. Mm -hmm. It's rare to meet somebody. I mean, I've talked to hundreds and hundreds, and the only like three people maybe, um, the were girl clearly the not movie. Jewish. <laughs> um, so not that funny, no. Um, <laughs> and th they were generally European. So they grew up in a, you know, they were in Spain. Or the, and so you tell them, oh, I'm doing this thing about curly hair, and they're like. <laughs> so um, there's just, there, it, it is a universal thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I lost my train of thought, of course. You were talking about um, men and I can't do it curly because I was asking you about men saying, no, I don't like it and the women being afraid. Yeah, I mean, er, you know, there's, it runs the gamut. But there's, um, if everybody has an issue with their curly hair and wants to straighten it, pretty much 95% of the straight girls have curly envy. Yeah. So if that's the case, yeah then what the hell is going on, right? Yeah. So that's the bigger issue because of like inside out empowerment yeah. is really what's it about. Like love the one you're with, you know? Yeah. And so this is it. And so, you know, I don't have like, who the hell am I to have like an issue about any of it? <laughs> but I mean, seriously, like who the hell are you? Um, you're but a good I, filmmaker. But I am the curly detective. So yeah. I sometimes... <laughs> I sometimes piss women off. <laughs> I was running around Washington Square Park a year ago, and this woman had like straight hair, and right in like right about her neck level, sexy, great butt, the whole thing. And straight <laughs> there, her hair went like this, and then right in the middle of the back, it went like this, and then straight again. So I'm running by, and hey, you got curly hair? <laughs> anyway. The, like, like she didn't want to be found out, yeah. right? So there's a well, shame. Well, it's underneath. Shame, shame well, is so in the issues that have not yet been covered. Like that was just one little piece. Shame's a big one, and shame relates a lot to ethnicity. Yes. And there are things sure. in there that are deep and powerful, and that's why I love this so much. Is because you're really touching on the human condition, totally. not about the hair. So let's do this. I, let's bring the lights up a little bit, and we can again. still talk. I, Go ahead. I think that it's changing. The world is changing with the mixture of people enter marriages that the children exactly. are being born with curly hair. So it's first, in our salon, we got the mothers who are Caucasian and the fathers who are black yep, or another uh, race that have curly hair. And the mothers come in and they want to learn how to take care of their children's hair. Yeah, well, this little girl, the little... Um, well, she's amazing. I mean, her father's oh, Jewish. I love her. Her mom, her mom opened the first yoga studio in the hood in Brooklyn. And her yeah. email address is one of my favorite ever. It's Mocha Hurricane. <laughs> and, and so, and she has two sisters well, who she's are the gorgeous. mom. And she's beautiful. But she just, she grew up in a yes. house where it's like, be yourself. Yes. So I often say the same thing. What, part of the, what you just said about what's going on is that we're all going to be curly in four generations because everybody's mixing and matching, and rightfully so. And we have so. a head start. And then, yes. 
But it's also that, that we are growing at a time when there's more thematics in society yes. saying, be yourself, be yourself, yes. be yourself, yes. be yourself. And as you said, the Dove campaign. But So the lights are up. We have Maggie over here and Jen over here. We want to hear from you. You all have a story. You didn't come with your gorgeous hair tonight. Please don't be shy, because this is like sisterhood. And here's somebody right over here. Maggie, if you want to. Right over here. Hi, uh, my name is Mara. I'm a stylist but not hairstylist. Uh, but I have a former career in other things, and I'm wondering what, Jonathan, right? Yes. If, if you have interviewed Dominican women, because in the Dominican Republic, it's super powerful, yep. it's class, race, dominance, everything, and I wanted to know your story about that, if you have some insight, and to you, uh, Marie, yes. um, if, if you do advising to, to, for example, parents who have adopted, like a very good friend of mine that, you know, happened to be Jewish, they adopted a black girl, and she was telling me, like, it's so challenging. I have no clue what to do oh, with her hair. Good like, question. I have no clue what to Why do. Why don't we start so, with the second part, Maria, so, and then we'll do um, the Dominican. For, we actually have programs like that. Clients come in with their children because we have a lot of them would have no clue if it's a mother with their children or father. Well, these are the things that I appreciate so much. Sometimes you find two fathers and they are two Caucasian men and they adopted a black kid and they have no idea what to do with the, children, with the kids' hair. And then you see them come in and learn how to take care of the kids' hair. It's so beautiful. Tell them to seek us and we will teach them or... You but know? they need to be taught. And Jonathan, the Dominican question? Well, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, just, I was just in Portland the, the other day, and I talked to a woman. She came out of a cafe. I'd never seen this before, which is, um, I mean, her, her, she was the blondest, straightest, thinnest hair. I mean, it, that was the straightest hair ever, natural, right? And she had a kid with hair out to here, right? And, and the dad is white and ethnic, not Jewish. And she, she's like a deer in headlights. And I, and, cause she's just, the thing that she uses is called a comb. Oh yeah. <laughs> and her kid, you know, and she's just literally, I directed her to some things because she's trying to feel her way, oh, yes. you know? Yes. And it's really, I mean, that's what makes it fun and interesting. It's like learning is that every a new language. Well, but it's learning a new language. But answer the Dominican. Oh, the Dominican. Question. The Dominican. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood in New York that is heavily Dominican, and um, I mean, in every Latin culture, actually, there there seems to be, you know, it goes both ways. So the younger Dominicans are growing out. Just, you know, they are growing out of that paradigm. It seems to me, um, and yet the pressure the motherly pressure, like when they go back home, mm -hmm. you know, to there or Jamaica or wherever it is, where their moms are still burning their hair straight, it's oh, yes. just, it's an amazing thing. Is it that way? Because I know you're from it's Haiti. It's that way in Haiti. Haiti, yeah, sure. As a matter of fact, my sister-in-law just got here from Haiti three days ago, and she showed up with her hair this short, natural. When I picked her up at the airport, I was like, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And she's looking at me, she's like, well, I'm like, you do know you come in here. Right? Yeah. She's like, yeah, I do. Yeah. You know, because in Haiti, they want you to straight your hair and um, because you're supposed to make it easy. And also, you look better for society. Yeah. Anybody and that's the same oh, because yeah. Haiti and Dominican Republic is the same thing. There is that class that you're supposed to look smooth and... So, um, so we want to hear stories too, not just questions. So please don't be shy, because well, again, I, have a, I have a question for anybody here. Like, has anybody feel like they ever lost a job because they had curly hair? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd love to. So, can yes. you? Can you? Yeah, there's so, um, Maggie, and there's some right in here in the middle okay. here. Jen, you want to get over there, or somebody can come out to you? Question. Here, we got to get these people out to the aisles. You can, you can walk out. I've, 
Oh, okay. Go <laughs> ahead. Is there, is, if there's a question, go ahead. Yeah, we've got a question right here. Go ahead. I was actually just going to say, it's almost like a secret society. You could travel anywhere in the world, and you see somebody with similar kind of hair. And I've made more friends, like yes. standing in the line of a ladies' room, just going, awesome hair. Yes. And that's the drive <laughs> And it's the funniest thing, because it's like just a simple head nod of like, yes. yo, you know what's up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. It's really nice to have that, and especially in a strange country or a strange place to have that. I, I've had that same experience. Yeah. That's so true. So the weirdest thing is that I, I feel like I'm an honorary member of the tribe. So if I'm in New York and I see somebody with massive curly hair and I smile <laughs> and I'm like, yes. they're like you, perv. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I think they should know. Over here. Let's Next hear about story your... Here. That's true. Hello. I'm so glad to tell this story. <laughs> All right. So I'm mixed. Um, my father is white, American, like third generation German. Um, my mother is from Trinidad and Tobago. And so there's all kinds all kinds of racial mix in her DNA. And so that being said, I have a racially ambiguous look. I can, I've been mistaken for Japanese, Filipino, uh, all kinds of things. And I happen to have a love of Japanese culture. Um, so I applied to a job at a Japanese restaurant before I started working at Medu Salon. And I thought it would be really cool. I knew all the terms for the food. I knew the greetings. I knew how to get along well with Japanese customers. Um, but I was told by the manager from day one, always have my hair up. Don't let my hair out just because it's more professional looking. And I didn't take this as a slight to me having curly hair. Um, I noticed everyone who had straight hair or whatever had their hair back. Um, and so one day I decided to wear my hair out, and uh, I was a hostess, and I'm the first person everybody sees, and I got compliments. No one thought my hair looked bad or anything, uh, but shortly after that, uh, they hired a new girl, and I was supposed to train her, and little did I know, I was training my replacement. No. I was out of there oh. immediately after, and it, it was heartbreaking. I'm so sorry. Yeah. It sounds like you, thank you for sharing your story. Yeah, sounds course. like that's not the first time you've heard that. Well, thank yeah, you. I mean, but there's a lot of things that happen because of that. There's, I mean, more insidious than that is things that most of these women either have gone through or, or would have gone, or know people who have gone through, which is that, oh, I'm going to Morgan Stanley on an interview and I have yeah. to straighten my hair. I'm going yeah. to that law firm. I'm going to be an accountant. It's one thing to be in the arts and you're like, you're a freak. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, you know the, the, the biggest thing to me is the perception stuff. That's yeah. why yeah. I asked them, yeah. uh, some of them, about it. Because it's like, really? Yeah. Like, wait, you went to Harvard and you have curly hair and they won't hire you? Yeah. You know, like, that. there's something crazy. Like, where did that? I, I think it's very similar to skin color yes. or whatever. Yes, it's like, it where is. did that come from? Dick, the other thing I'm curious about, can I just see a show of hands in the audience? How many people's parents, one or the other or both, tried to get them to wear their hair straight instead of curly. Yeah. So that, that's a whole thing on the couch, too. Well, that's, a, really, that's where I the shame and that. pride thing comes it's from. Absolutely. You know. We have a, another question right over here. comment. Yep. Hi, I'm Michelle. And uh, when I was four years old, I'm the daughter of a very straight-haired mother. And she just did not know what to do with my hair. And it was so much trouble for her that she cut it all off into the tiniest, shortest pixie with the most uneven bangs you've ever seen. <laughs> and I cried and cried and cried for years. And I never, ever let anyone touch my hair ever again. <laughs> and since I've had my own curly girl here. Oh. Uh, Yay. I love curly stories, mom and daughter People stories. People come up to me all the time since she was like a year old and had like three curls sticking out of her head saying, how do you take care of curly hair? I'm a straight-haired mom with a curly-haired daughter. Um, I've adopted a curly-haired girl. What do I do? And I think we all need to help out in preschools around this country with a remedial <laughs> curly girl training program. <laughs> you know, I, I've, th these monologue stories that I do, which are just people sign up, and then they craft a monologue, and they get up on stage. And it's really, 
because it goes to the heart of it. You know, what I often say is that here's what happens when you either watch a video like that or anybody's story or you go to the curly monologues. You, you see e laughing and, and crying, that's one thing, and you see heads going like this all the time. Yeah. Or. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's both, you know? Well, the, the other thing that I, th I used to think about a lot is the hours that I spent. Yes. And the hours that could have been spent, like, saving the world or doing something creative or God knows what the hours I spent. I can't get those hours right, and, back. Uh, and underneath that was your wanting to be who you weren't. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, um, also, I just want to say one other word, um, and somebody said it in the film, but I forgot about it. Bangs. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, by the way, the woman with the curly bangs, I don't know if any of you recognized her. Um, uh, she was in Nashville. Oh. And, um, you know the bangs that go like this? That yeah. Just, oh. um, she's really, she's quite, um, Chaley Rose. And when she, I met her, she was a waitress in New York mm -hmm. and then got on Nashville. And um, she's from this Midwest. I mean, she's a biracial woman live, who grew up in the Midwest, like in the whitest place. And, and so everybody's story, to your point, really has their own unique path yeah. to acceptance. Anybody you know, else have a story? One yeah, more story. Here we go. Yeah. Um, sorry, I fell down. Um, can I? <laughs> Good hair. Um, hi, I'm Chloe. I just got my hair done by the lovely ladies of Madhu. <laughs> <laughs> I have once went to another salon. I sorely regretted it, and I will never do it again. Oh, God. <laughs> There's so, the promo. <laughs> um, go once, and you'll never go anywhere else. Uh, so I just want to say my mother's white, my father's black. Uh, my father, the twice time, the two times he did my hair, it was a disaster um, because he just kept making it more tangled somehow. But uh, my mother used to put curlers in my bangs, and I went to very black schools. I don't know how I survived them, but I went to very black schools, and... I, the ridicule that I got in school, I mean, I went home crying like almost every day of middle school and like the first two years of high school because my white mother did not know how to curl my bangs, so I just had little afros on the front of my head. Uh, and she wouldn't let me shave my armpits, so I had little afros on my armpits. I mean, I was just a mess. Um, <laughs> but all of those things gave me lots and lots of character and made me the person I am today. And I will say that I was never, I tried to wear the straight hair. My hair just kept being curly because that's what it wanted to do. But I tried the Japanese straightening treatment. All my hair fell out. Um, but now I am an entrepreneur, and my afro is my best asset. Everybody remembers me. Everywhere I go, they'll be like, oh, I remember you. I met you at that event, and da 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 da, da. And so, you know, being different is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> There's one over there. We'll, t we'll take a couple more. I know, I, I mean, I could talk about this all night. One and right over here. Hi, I, um, I, I don't feel like I always hated my curls. I always liked my curls, so oh, I don't good. know if any, anyone else Real. feels the way. Because I remember in high school, everyone was getting perms, and I had a huge afro, and I didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, th I thought it was really cool that I had the curly hair. So I never felt that way. Like, I know my sister used to iron hair, but I never did that. Good I, for you. For me, it was more my red hair, which was strange, <laughs> where I was, not my curly. So I always appreciate having curly Good hair. Good for you. So I don't know if that's like... That's you're great. Talking, like Good for you. People, so. Actually, what you say is interesting to me because um, the people who... Um, Red-headed curly girls will always say that the thing that mo was most challenging growing up wasn't the curls, but was the, the red. red. Uh, yeah. And I, so the, the, back to the woman, the, the shrink who can't deal with her hair, yeah. right? She said to me one day, I know why you relate to curly girls. And I said, okay. And she said, because you had really red hair, right? Yeah. yeah. She yeah. said, so you know what it's like to be a member of a tribe that nobody knows what it's like unless you're in it. And that's a big, that's a big deal, that resonance of what it is my, my son's, um, Best friend, stepmom, she said, oh, what are you working on? She has like stringy, just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and, um, and the color is. And so she go, I said, oh, I'm doing this thing about, you know, Project Curly, telling the stories of curly-haired females. She's like, I don't get it. Yeah. I said, um, what do you mean? She said, because I figured every woman intuitively understands that somebody with this yes. has an issue with something, yeah. Yeah. right? 
She said, I don't get it. I said, what don't you get? She said, well, we all have hair. We're all, we're all kind of defined by our hair. I said, if I was te telling somebody that they're going to meet you on the street, your hair would be like number 17 on the list. <laughs> And with a curly girl, it's like one or two, yes. right? I mean, yes. it's like, well, what do you, you say? Well, you said something interesting, because, you know, growing up ironing and wanting the straight hair and the little nose and the southern accent and God knows what else, I remember the first time I saw somebody get a perm, and I thought, what? Why? <laughs> Why would they do that? It's, and it's, it's, it's so funny the way the tide has it's turned. True. For me, the first time I saw my parents fight was... My mother took me to a neighbor's house and flat ironed my hair. Oh. And my father showed up and he I was hope it's just... longer than this. Yes. <laughs> my father was when he killed a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good for him. Yes. And I thought, wow, this is really interesting. It really? There is my mother who wants my hair straight like Barbie and it's my dad's like, leave her alone. You know, so... Well, Barbie's gotten curves, and I've changed the boobs and the feet. Oh, so I know. Maybe she, Diva should do a, like, Diva Barbie or totally. something. Totally. No, she, she, uh, she just wanted to be There's me. one up there, yeah? Go ahead. We have Matt, three, do more, Barbie. three more stories oh, oh. on the right. <laughs> three more? Okay, we'll take these, because I have to hear them. And I see, I see somebody I know, so we'll take them all. Uh, Marie, Cookie Block. So nice to see you. Hi, Debbie. How are you? Cookie. 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 Oh, Cookie. Oh, yeah. my God. I know. I know. You remember me. It's been a long time. I remember time. you, yes. <laughs> I would just like to state the obvious that is so life-affirming being in a whole auditorium with curly girls. I mean, it's just, it's just the best. And one other obvious point, we are so lucky in San Francisco to have Marie and Medusalon, and we all thank you. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Story number two. Um, so just the other day, actually, um, I was on Facebook, and they have the Facebook memories that show you posts from, you know, a couple years ago. And it was a post that my friend had um, put on my wall in response to a picture of me with straight hair. And it was like, wow, you look so much better with straight hair. Oh. And it was like the most insulting thing that That's anybody could ever, That's amazing. ever say to me. And yeah. it's, it's interesting that people will come up to me and they'll be like, you know, you've, nobody's probably ever said this to you before, but you should try straightening your hair. Oh. You know, like, it, it's, and it's, it's interesting that then those same people are like, oh, my God, your hair is so curly. It's beautiful. I love it. Like, I wish I had your hair. But at yes. the same time, it's like, oh, but you should totally straighten it. Oh. You look way better with straight hair. And those it's are like, not people you want to hang out with. Yeah. No, they are your ex-friend. <laughs> yeah. They are your ex-friend. Thank yeah. you yes. for sharing that. Your hair somebody, is beautiful. I know somebody who broke up. She, had the, she has the most amazing, like, Moroccan Jewish tight curls and was going out with this guy for a while and whatever, and one day she decides to straighten her hair, which must have been a trip, because I don't know how that's even possible. And, she, and the guy went, oh my God, you should do that every day. And that guy was out of her <laughs> life <laughs> in five friggin' minutes. I like that. <laughs> hey, my pal, Susan. Okay. So three things that occur to me, tape, Dippity doo. Oh. And headaches. Oh, God. Tape. My grandmother used to tape my bangs to my head. <laughs> Dippity doo. Dippity doo. <laughs> and headaches from pulling my hair as tight as I possibly yes. could yes. Oh. to put it into that soda pop can that I slept with every single yes. night. Yes. And I wondered why I had headaches. Yes. <laughs> And they went away. And you don't have to do it anymore. Your hair is gorgeous. I don't gorgeous. have to do it again. Thank ever. you. So <laughs> we're going to do two things. I'm going to pick out the raffle winners. And these names, I wish I could enter this raffle. I can't. But um, so we have two things to raffle off. One, and by the way, I know there's some other stylists here tonight from other salons. And I just want to say, Love Madhu, but there are other salons in San Francisco, and I want to acknowledge that because we are an equal opportunity curly girl place. Um, <laughs> she just cuts my hair, and I know her, and I love her. And plus, we gossip like, oh my God. And, and also, cool. thank you for coming out. So, for 
yes. to learn more about Pernilla. Yes. Thank you. So we're going to pick the raffle winners, and then I'm going to ask all of the models and all of the stylists to come up so you can see how gorgeous they are. And so if your name is called, please go to the table afterwards, and we'll take your email for the haircut with Marie, and you will get your big diva good gift box. So the winner of the diva gift box is, I'm gonna, not going to do well in your last name, Arda Zeigelbaum. Arda, all right, good for you. You won, excellent. And the winner of the very expensive haircut by my friend Marie is Allison Milmo. Allison, all right. <laughs> And if I could ask all of you beautiful models and stylists to just come up right here, there's steps over here, so we can, um, and those of you who are over there, come up this way, and we just want to see how you all and how gorgeous you are, and to give you a round of applause, and thank you so much, and thank you to Marie, and thank you to Jonathan, and thank most you, of all, thank thanks you. to thank all you of you guys. for coming you. tonight. Come on thank up, you. come on into the light, ladies. Step right in front here in the light, because you're, and you too, oh, and gentlemen, gorgeous. Step right in the front here, beautiful. Thank you, yay! <laughs> Thanks so much, you look fabulous. Thanks so much for coming, you look so good. I love your hair. Have a good evening, enjoy, good night. <laughs>